What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and for you guys today we have my opinion of Sony's 20mm f1.8 for video use. As always this is not sponsored content and I bought this lens with my own cash so strap in for a no holds barred review of this lens from a videographer's perspective. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, I've linked everything mentioned in this video in the description box below, and it would be great if you could show some love for the channel by hitting the notification bell next to your subscribe button. That just means the world to me and makes a massive difference to the growth of the channel. So anyway, what is this lens? Well, it's a 20 millimeter prime lens for Sony E-mount and it has a pretty large maximum aperture of f1.8. It has nine rounded aperture blades, which means it should stay nice and smooth in your background as you stop down. It was also awarded the Prime Lens of the Year in 2020 by DP Review, so I'm expecting pretty big things from this. It has a 94 degree field of view, which is pretty wide, but not to the extent where it reminds you of that kind of warped fisheye look. 20 millimeters is actually my preferred focal length for these videos. Having limited space, it gives you a nice field of view and the wide max aperture gives you good separation from the background. I just love it. In terms of construction, it has 14 elements in 12 groups with two aspherical elements and three extra low dispersion elements for minimizing aberrations and distortion. Sony say it has something called nano AR coating, which is meant to help reduce flare and increase contrast. It has a very ordinary filter thread of 67 millimeters and a minimum focusing distance of 18 centimeters. It's not a stabilized lens, but then arguably you don't really need it to be as it's E-mount and almost every single Sony camera have built-in image stabilization. But how's the build quality? Well, the first thing I noticed when I got this lens is its size or lack thereof. You can't really tell now because I've got the lens hood on. Let's just break it down. This lens is actually only eight and a half centimeters long, so really small, and it only weighs 373 grams. So all in all, really compact. The focus ring feels really soft and smooth, and it's quiet if I hold that up to the mic. There are no hard stops. Uh, that's just because it's a focus by wire lens, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem because I don't think this lens is aimed at manual focusing at all. <laughs> the materials used to make the lens, I would say are very good. They remind me a lot of Canon L lenses, that kind of ballpark, and it's a very good. And I also say it's a joy to use. It's everything about it feels really nice. All the switches, all of uh, the rings, yeah, it's just a, it's a joy to use. One other nice thing is Sony say this is a weather sealed lens. It does have a little bit of a rubbery kind of gasket on the mount, which is nice. But I, I mean, most of the Sony cameras are not that weather sealed. So take it with a pinch of salt, maybe, and be careful. Both the lens hood and lens cap feel really kind of tight and snappy. This might seem like a strange thing to mention, but given that I can't stand the ones you get with Canon lenses, I think it's worth mentioning because I find that the Canon ones, the caps fall off very often and the hoods I find break. You know, sometimes something in, in them breaks and they don't quite snap on as well as they used to. One thing I love about this lens is it has an aperture ring on the lens itself, like some of the amazing Fuji lenses that you can get. Plus, you can de-click it. When you do de-click the aperture ring, it feels really smooth and it has hard stops, obviously. But much like the focus ring, it's controlled by an internal motor. So there's always a bit of a delay when you turn it. And I just would have preferred if it was a little bit more responsive. I've been using the Sigma 20mm f1.4 art lens for this angle for so long. I reviewed it back along and loved it. So I really want to know how these two lenses compare. Let's do it. In terms of size and weight, the Sigma is huge in comparison. The Sony is only 373 grams, whereas the Sigma, depending on the mount you choose, is over a kilo. The Sigma is also much wider and much longer. And of course, let's not forget that the Sigma has that bulbous front element. But of course, the image you get from them is the most important thing. So this is the Sigma. Now with Sigma lenses, I've always found them really good for their center sharpness. The outer focus areas look lovely. But to be honest, I don't want to go too much into looking at detail in this video, because to be honest, with these really modern, super sharp lenses, you really want to be taking photos and then pixel peeping. And that's not my thing at all. 
We also need to bear in mind that this is an EF copy of the Sigma and I'm adapting it with the Sigma MC11 adapter. And that's why, get ready for a shock, this is what the Sony looks like. It's so much wider and that has to be just the effect of adapting a lens to a Sony body. Both of these shots look gorgeous in their own right, but when we look at them side by side, you can see the Sony looks noticeably cooler, the Sigma noticeably warmer, and if I cut out little Yoda's face and look at the waveform, you can see that whilst these are both at the same aperture of f1.8, the Sigma actually has slightly better light transmission. And whilst this is further reminded that the f-stops you find on lenses are not measurements of light, it is worth bearing in mind that the Sigma will open up a further two-thirds of a stop, which I estimate will give you an advantage of around three-quarters of a stop over the Sony. Next, I wanted to see how the lenses fared when it came to lens breathing. If you're not sure what I mean by lens breathing, it's the amount in which your frame changes when you rack focus from infinity to close focus. With the Sigma, you can see there is a little bit of focus breathing. That's to be expected. After all, these are photography lenses and focus breathing is not prioritized with photography lenses. And that's one of the reasons why you pay so much more for cinematography lenses. Now let's switch to the Sony and I suggest you brace yourself. So here it is and oh dear lord I have done quite a few of these breathing tests and this one by some margin has to be the very worst at focus breathing that I have ever seen. It's a big enough difference that I'd say at infinity it is a 20mm lens but at closest focus it's like a 24mm lens. Not that this is really the reason you buy this kind of lens, but the outer focus areas and bokeh balls are beautiful when wide open and as you stop down, they stay nice and rounded. Of course, at those smaller apertures, you do get those nice starbursts. Right, now let me show you what this looks like in the real world. Just to warn you, I was in quite a hurry when I filmed these clips, as it was just as I was going on to paternity leave. I absolutely love the image quality though. Everything you see is shot at f1.8 and the detail I found was just wonderful. One thing to remember is if you're using this lens outside with a circular variable ND, you might notice some extra vignetting around the edges and that's just because it's a very wide lens. But actually with this lens, my preference is to use the active stabilization mode on the a7S III, which crops in by a very tiny amount, but it just gives you that rock solid stability. Plus the vignetting is a lot less noticeable. Just to be really crystal clear, the vignetting is from my Genus Tech filter and not from the lens itself. And just look how beautifully steady that top shot is. So at this stage, I would say this lens represents fair but not exceptional value for money. But what are the alternatives? Well, of course, there's the aforementioned Sigma 20mm, which I think is exceptional quality and actually decent value for money. Of course, Sony do make a 20mm f2.8 pancake lens, which is tiny and actually not bad value. We've got the Canon 20mm f2.8, which is quite an old lens now, and I would actually say it's pretty overpriced when you buy it new. However, if you can pick one up secondhand, it's actually not bad value. Rockinon slash Bauer slash Samyang make a 20mm f1.8 as well. I always find these lenses insanely good value for money. However, they're not always optically perfect. Tamron also make a 20mm f2.8. This is really quite good value and it's a good performance. Let's also not forget that Nikon make a 20mm f1.8 and another e-mount option, of course Zeiss make their Loxia 21mm, I know it's not a 20mm but near enough, f2.8. Personally I find the Loxia 2.8 really expensive for the money and I would definitely direct you towards this one instead. So finally let's go to my opinion. The build quality seems really high end, I really like the materials they've used and everything works brilliantly, it's just a joy to use. The optical quality is pretty stunning, you saw the results. Compared to the Sigma, I really appreciate the fact that with this one I can use filters on the front, I appreciate the decrease in size and weight, and I also appreciate the silent and very good autofocus that you get with this one. It's with a pretty heavy heart that I think this is the one I'm going to hang on to. It's just slightly more convenient than the Sigma, so I think the Sigma will be heading its, uh, its way to eBay. I don't have a huge amount of criticism to give this lens at the moment, but the one thing I'd say is this isn't a good value lens. 
I'll just say that. And that goes for a lot of the E-mount native glass. It's $900 on Amazon at the time of filming, and for an f1.8 prime lens, that's a hell of a lot of money. I do love it though. Gotta say, it's, um, yeah, it's a really impressive lens. Um, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do ask me questions about this lens if you have any in the comment section below. I'm down there as much as I possibly can be. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.